Hi, how's it going? As promised, the boot up video of a moderately configured Sunfire 6800 system. Apologies for how long it took me to get this back together again. We're going to start with the system already plugged in and I'm flipping the power switches on the front and back AC input boxes which will bring basic voltage to the system. This brings up the frame manager which is booting currently. It's a full sun system or a system board in, or sorry, a single board computer that lives inside this top cap here. The fans that are running are the rack fans, so they're not actually the 6800 fans. The system's ready. I'll flip the main frame manager switch. That signals the power supplies to kick on the breakers, and off we go. And the system controller will start booting. You may notice some continuity errors in this video. It took about five complete system startups to film everything. So the configuration changes slightly as we go along. It then took an awful long time to edit all of this crap together. So again, I've had this for about, oh, six or eight weeks and I've been slowly putting things together. So the system controller is in the middle of its boot process. Uh, I think I mentioned in the last video, it's running a 75 megahertz, uh, I think it's a MicroSpark processor. It's got a small operating system and the platform itself runs, or at least the platform application runs in Java. Although the system is TCP IP enabled, I have it running off the serial port. So the system controller is now fully up. We're going to switch to the platform shell. And we're going to list what's available to the system right now. Since everything is powered down, the only thing running is the system controller. There's nothing really available. And this is all the information the system has right now, which is all coming from that system controller. So we're going to power up the two internal system grids. So you can see the fans are coming up and the leftmost system boards have juice applied. Fans will spool up. And you can see them switching to green as they switch from standby to active mode. The system boards will not power up yet. They only have power applied. They're not actually booted yet. we we'll jump back in time. You can see the IOs on the right hand side, the repeater boards on the right hand side and the fan trays coming up. And here we can see uh, the system controller view of this process. Fan tray 0 through 3. These are the system boards, RPs are the repeater boards, and IB is the IO PCI module. There's grid ones, the right hand boards will come up, there they go. And the left hand boards and IO boards. So now we're going to flip the virtual key switch. No way, first we're going to show you what's available in the system now. Now I've got a lot of voltages and temperatures because all the power supplies are properly up and the fans are running. We have power, so it's able to find a lot more of the objects. We're going to switch to the domain. I have it configured with five of the system boards and one of the I.O. systems. And now we'll switch the virtual key switch on. So you'll see the left hand system board will flip from maintenance to powered up. It will go from orange to green. There it goes. And the one in from that. 
I won't show you the full of this because it's kind of dull. I have snipped a lot of chunks out of this video because it does take quite a long time for it to power up. Any minute now. There it goes. You see the power supplies are fully on and they're active with the green lights. And you'll notice by the pitch change that we've moved to 300% speed so that we're not sitting around for 25 minutes while the system completely boots. So during this period of time, what's happening, I'm sorry, it's not booting, it's system checking. During this period of time, a huge number of internal system tests are being run. The boards are powered up, they are active, and it's running internal tests on the CPUs, on the RAM, on the repeater boards, on the I.O. boards, on the cards in the I.O. systems, and ensuring that everything is in a working state. Anything that fails will be marked. It'll try and recover some of the failures. Others, it'll simply mark it as unusable and leave it out of the system. You'll see on the left we have N0, SB, P3. So SB is the system board, N0 is the main system bus, so it's always N0. It's flipping around the system board. The P is the processor number. So you can see it's going from 0 to 3 because each system board has four processors on it. And it's running all of these individual tests on the processors, on the e-cache that's attached to the processors, and to the RAM because the RAMs are tied to specific processors as well. If you're bored, skip ahead uh, a minute or so, 30 seconds. And now we're on to the I.O. systems. There's not actually that many boards in it. And I only have one of the I.O. modules connected to this domain. And we're going to flip back to real time right now. All the system checks have been passed. Open boot prom has been sent to the primary processor. Open boot has been booted. 
and then the auto boot instruction has been run out of the environment variables of the NVRAM and SunOS 5.10 or Solaris 10 is now booting. The internal disks for Solaris are in the D240 that is at the top of the rack under the frame manager. I name my system Sun6800. I know it's not that original. I'm going to follow up this video with a second one with the full boot from start to finish. That's probably going to be 30 odd, 40 odd minutes. It will be dull, but for anybody who's interested, it will run at real time speed. So it should be easier to catch things. And now we're in Solaris. Sun 4 architecture. A couple of commands I didn't remember didn't exist. System diagnostics, processor, RAM sticks, bus, PCI cards, and a couple of sticks that are bad in RAM. All the available I.O. units on the main bus. No field replaceable unit diagnostics available. Boot up D message. This will take a while, and frankly, I shouldn't have done it because it's not that exciting. There's all the CPUs coming up though. And we're going to do a processor stat in a tick, and that shows all 20 processors that are booted and available to the system. There we go. The system is fully capable of 24 processors, but I don't have a sixth system board that will run in this configuration. Unfortunately, that's about it. We have a fully configured 6800, or nearly fully configured, up and running, and then we're going to shut it back down. This takes somewhat less time, conveniently. We're going to have to remember how to exit back to the domain. We're going to turn the virtual key switch off. lights on the system board, the I.O. boards, the repeater boards are flicking off right now. I'm going to jump back to the domain, I'm sorry, to the platform control. And that's not how you spell grid, there it goes. And the system's fully down. Give me a second, I'll flip the flame manager off and you'll hear a big loud clack as the breakers go and it'll power the system down completely. If you have been, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate all the comments and I will continue to post. Take care everybody, thank you very much.